What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Let's waste no time, let's get right into this. So we created three sets, pulling inspiration and references from all over. And we landed on the idea of creating one of the sets to be completely made out of construction plastic. Now there was a photo, I'll kind of throw it up here. This was the main inspiration. And I like this idea because plastic the type of plastic that we got is very flowy so if you're adding wind to it you can get the nice movement in the background once you throw some light into it you can get some interesting depth happening because there's going to be some light loss there's going to be some diffusion there's going to be some wrinkling and texture being made and then again overall texture from the plastic too so i like the usability of this particular texture for this set now big shout out to Qua. he is my swiss army knife when it comes to production he does it all from being a PA from set designer you name it and he's learning on the go so he was the main one who helped me kind of build this set I had the vision so we just kind of just communicated and gave direction and he was the one who hung it and stuff like that as I was checking framing and composition and going through the shots uh, and prepare for the shoot oh that's one thing I want to mention too is this the props we have for this set the location we had had a bunch of old furniture super unique and this allowed us to have this this kind of contrast between this modern look and she style that Evan was wearing with this rundown kind of old but then seal it in plastic idea now honestly there's no meaning to any of the stuff that we use in this video it's purely aesthetic and that was really the fun part of this yeah because then what I'll do too is just get a close shot of you placing the apple down yeah so it won't so we'll feel kind of like when we cut back to this how we lit that was very simple we had the 300x boomed above the talent of course we have multiple sandbags so we're gonna fall over on her and we had the speed light dome gridded and diffused um, just straightly pointing down now the reason why i picked the 300x over a lot of different lights is that i like the bicolor option because we kind of auditioned to see do we want her to feel more warm in the midst of this color or do we want to cool it off so we found a happy balance in between the two and um, it really gives her skin tone a really nice warmth to it uh, in the midst of whatever we're doing with the coloring in the background. And speaking of color, we had the 300C, the Nova 300C, and that allowed us to kind of just push light all the way through that whole set. And again, pushing light through plastic, a thin plastic, it just spreads all that light everywhere, which is great. And man, I've actually never used the 300C and I actually need to get one of these for myself. The color reproduction is just so rich. And so um, really have fun trying to pick what color works best for that situation. Uh, and we went more towards um, mainly contrasting colors. Now that we have one particular color scheme we use, it was more complementary. So it's the yellow background with the orange and the amber. And um, it kind of contrasts that green that she has on. Um, but we kind of just made sure we had color contrast throughout for the for the most part. And then just to block the spill from the colored light from the 300C coming through, we just made sure to have some uh, a flag or something just blocking that light from spilling onto her uh, to make sure that there wasn't low weird light pollution. What shape do you want? Now for the second set, it's pretty much straightforward. We just used again the ship lap wall that was white and that allowed us to just bring in the, the rest of the set pieces we need. Now we just took the 300C and blasted blue across the uh, entire wall. And um, I guess in this case, we can talk about angling. It's pretty important because if you had these C, the 300C just kind of straight on blasting, it's gonna hit everything and you won't, be have, you won't be able to have a real nice separation. So we've had it about 45 degrees, almost 50 degrees off to the right. And then it was just making sure to just hit the background. Now we didn't do too much flagging on her because I wanted her to be almost silhouetted and in blue. Um, and then we just had the 26 degree spotlight hitting the center of that wall. And it's really interesting to see how powerful the 600D is because you didn't get to see any blue spill into the white light. And that white light stayed pure. I don't really know the science behind it, but it, it, it did what it did and it looks great. <laughs> And then off to the side to the back of me, we had the uh, the lantern and that was just like a little bit of fill. So it won't go completely into shadow. So if I have that op uh, that choice to bring it all the way down in post or not. Um, let's do a playback for your song for this. Why are you doing 
So 90% of the time I use the 18 to 35 Sigma Cine zoom lens on set as well as my 50 mil Zeiss Milvis uh, for like closer detail shots. And so that gave me a lot of flexibility. Now the great thing about Cine zooms is, is not the fact that there's three primes in one, whatever that means. More importantly is actually that is parfocal. That is a feature for high-end Cine zooms. So with a parfocal lens, you are essentially being able to hold your focus once you set your back focus. And then so when you zoom out or zoom in, you can hold that same focal point without changing to refocus, which is great. So why this is important because most of the time we all kind of done this before we we do a digital zoom in post to replicate some sort of uh, camera movement as well as trying to draw interest into the frame the downside of doing a digital zoom in post is that you're moving the entire frame inward uh, or you're zooming into the entire frame so you're essentially cropping information and um, it could be subtle, but you can't really do any big things because you might lose information and detail if you zoom in too much, depending on your camera. Now, having a par focal zoom lens, particularly a cine zoom lens, and this allows you to make in-camera zooms rather than making digital zooms in post. And the results are way better. I think that's a wrap, y'all. That's insane! <laughs> All right, y'all, this wraps it up for this video. If you are interested in a breakdown of how I graded this film or this music video, uh, let me know in the comments below. I did use Dehancer. If you don't know what Dehancer is, I'll make sure to put the link in the description. But basically, it's a film emulator. It's probably the best film emulator plugin that you can use on any editing pro pro uh, program. And I definitely use it for DaVinci Resolve. Also, for all the gear I talked about, um, you can get this rented from Lens Rental. There is a discount code and link. Definitely check it out because I know everybody doesn't have access to gear. I've been saying this forever. I've been preaching this for forever. But definitely check out Lens Rental. They have a large library of a lot of the gear that you might need for your next project. All right, I'm done. Peace. Bye. See ya. <laughs>